All right. So here is that chart. Looking at this chart, the greatest chart in the world, what can we learn from it? Okay. So the first thing, uh, and, and, and this is actually, I will start with a shortcoming of the uh, of the chart. Uh, the the hourly, the the average hourly wages that, that that should be in green or something like that because that is the relevant that is the relevant um, line um, from the perspective of time prices. Basically, whatever you see below the um, the hourly the average hourly wages. Uh, is becoming cheaper. That doesn't mean that it is not increasing in price, but it is becoming cheaper because it is growing in price at a slower pace than average hourly earnings. So you can see that housing, food and beverages, cars, um, household furnishings, uh, clothing, cell phones, uh, toys, computer software, TVs are becoming much, much less expensive relative to wages. In fact, they are, they are actually... Uh, becoming cheaper in real terms because the overall inflation was 56%. I think you are looking now at the chart between 19 uh, between 1998 and 2018. Yes, that's what you're looking at. And basically, what Mark does here, he 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 puts he puts the black line through it, and that's the inflation. And what you can see is that average hourly earnings. Um, have grown at a faster pace than inflation. You would expect that because we are becoming more productive. But when you look at childcare, medical care, college tuition, college textbook, hospital services, what you realize that they become massively more expensive. What do they have all in common? What they have all in common is that the, the, the government is very heavily in, involved in their production and also in subsidizing. Um, uh, of them. So, for example, college textbooks on college tuition. There is a reason why it's increasing, and that is because the government is pumping ever more money into the tertiary education system uh, through subsidies. So, if a kid doesn't have enough money, uh, he can also uh, borrow from, he can always borrow from the government uh, to pay back later. And he, he, he's suddenly sitting a quarter of a million dollars and the university knows it. So they can jack up the prices because they know they are going to get it. Hospital services. Once again, uh, this is something that the government has declared is basically universal human rights. So a lot of money is being uh, being pushed into the healthcare sector in government subsidies and government regulations. Um, uh, currently, roughly nine out of every ten dollars uh, uh, that that is being spent in uh, in 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 the healthcare sector is being paid by the government or by 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 uh, private providers, but not by by the people themselves. So obviously, when there is a lot of money sloshing around in a variety of subsidies and loans and and so forth, uh, the prices are going to go up. Childcare very similar to that. Uh, that is partly driven by uh, regulation. For example, in Washington, D.C., just last week, it was decided that uh, anybody taking care of children has to have a college degree. Um, now, obviously, that's completely idiotic. There is no reason for that at all. Plenty of Americans have survived with Latin American nannies for decades, maybe even centuries. But today in Washington, D.C., you need a college degree. What does that mean? That means that um, the, your, your child care is going to cost much more because you are getting a, a person who is going to be able to command more money and, um, and, uh, and to, to, uh, partly to pay off their, uh, their debts. Whereas where the market is permitted to function uh, more or less perfectly, uh, cars, uh, household furnishing, clothing, TVs is a perfect example because we also import a lot of um, electronics from abroad. And those have fallen by something like 90%. So this is a very important indicator of the heavier the, 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 the government involvement in, uh, in industry, the, 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 the faster the prices rise and the less they are involved, the, 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 the cheaper things get. I don't know if you have this uh, expression in uh, the Czech Republic, but are you familiar with he who pays the piper calls the tune? Yes, yes. Uh, so yeah. it, in other words, when producers uh, have you know, a customer basis, then the customers sort of get to call the tune because they're the ones paying them. If they're not accountable to the customers, well, then the customers can go somewhere else. So the producers act to try and please the consumer. But when there's government subsidies, well, then 
they try to please the politicians. And now it's almost like the consumers are completely irrelevant. You get treated like total trash by uh, these producers at that point because all of their focus is how do we uh, get our uh, funds again next year? So we have the case against subsidies. And then the case you mentioned, that case pisses me off so much about needing a college degree to babysit kids or watch them in exchange for money, a blatant violation of I mean, just the self-ownership principle. But look at that. They're explicitly lowering the supply of child care providers, literally making it illegal unless you have some degree from some uh, Marxist university. And then they tell you that, oh, well, we have no clue why the price is so high out of nowhere. They literally limit the supply, increase the price and say, gosh, I, I guess the people just have too much freedom. I mean, it is unbelievable. It, that it, is a very important graph. Thank you for bringing that up. It's completely unbelievable, and uh, it's um, it has a lot of consequences, negative consequences throughout the economy. Part of the reason why people are taking, uh, you know, people are not having as many babies um, as as they could, uh, is because they are they are looking at the price of raising a child in a in a typical advanced economy with regulations like that, and saying, well. Uh, you know, we we basically cannot afford this. Uh, the, the the child is going to cost us three hundred thousand dollars before it walks out of the door at the age of eighteen, uh, adjusted for um, you know childcare and college education and things like that. Do we really have that kind of money, uh, especially in the economy where our real earnings are becoming smaller due to inflation? But that's not that, that's that's a that's a that's 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 an example that could be multiplied millions of times so here in virginia for example let's say that you are a billionaire and um your greatest desire in your life is to build a hospital uh, that you are going to provide um people with health care I, I realize that not very many people think that billionaires have a heart but a lot of them do and a lot of them want to do a lot of good look at the charity of Bill Gates and Warren Buffett and things like that. So let's say that you've got a billionaire who wants, all he wants to do is to build a hospital. Can he do it in the state of Virginia? The answer is yes, he can, provided that this billionaire can prove to the government of Virginia that there's a need for this hospital. And who decides whether there is a need for an additional hospital? Well, it's all the other hospitals in Virginia. So it's it called certificate sense. of need laws it's, it's, for people it, that aren't. It's called certificate of need because yeah. I did not believe that this was a real thing, but it actually is. And most states have them. So in America, this country that we live in, the paragon of capitalism, your competitors have to essentially sign off on your on you having the privilege of taking the risk in the marketplace, whether your hospital is going to increase, make profit or not, um, you, you cannot make it up. 